Okay, so let's have a look at the next step in rubrics. Turn it in. So we created a new rubric, and this is how a plain blank one looks. And you'll notice that it will start you off with three or four criteria and usually three scales. So this gives you your grid of where you'll need to fill in the criteria, and then depending on how many marks that you're going to give for each bit. If you scroll right down to the bottom, you'll also see rubric scoring. And again, if you want it in percentages, or if you wanted to enter a mark, or if you didn't want uh, any value at all. So I'm going to select no value for this one. And then you can start filling them in. So this scale might be anything you want. It might be 1 to 10, it might be um, an undergrad, so it might be a first to a third, or it might be postgrad, so you've got distinction through to, to fail. So fill in the different scores here. Okay, so I've just filled in the scales across the top with an undergraduate criteria. And now we're going to fill in the details. The titles are character limited, so you might need to abbreviate it, but you can always put more information underneath. So you can keep on putting in the details in here. If you need any more, you can always press the plus button, which adds more rows, or the plus button over here, which adds more columns. Once you'd finished filling in the criteria and you've finished filling in scales, start blocking in the main uh, boxes. So this might be that you've taken it from a mark scheme or a grading criteria, for instance. And if you find it easier, you can copy and paste it from Microsoft Word if you've already got it in a Word document. Unfortunately, you will have to do each box at a time because Turnitin won't understand the tables that you might have already set up in Word. But if you use shortcuts such as Control C to copy and Control V to paste, you should find it relatively quick to complete this grid. Okay, we'll take a look at a few more details in the next video.